Welcome to lesson three of week 15. This week we'll look at how to convert a loop function to a recursive function. We'll write an iterative function and then go through a conversion checklist and turn that iterative function into a recursive function. And I'll leave you with an independent task to do on your own. Remember that any task that can be completed using an iteration can be also done using recursion. In other words, we can always convert a loop structure into a recursive structure. In this lesson, we'll see how. Before we begin, write an iterative function and then we'll use it and you can work along with this lesson. This is a simple task. We've done things like this a load of times. Write an iterative function that finds the largest in a series of numbers entered by the user and, and returns the largest value. Call it from the main program and print the, the result, which will be the largest value. So stop the stop this lesson now and write that program because we're going to work through it and convert it from a loop to a recursive function. So I wrote it and it's I've called it find largest. It uses a while loop and it loops until the user enters zero and it returns the largest of a series of numbers that they have entered. We've written programs like this many times and it uses a while loop. If you haven't done the task, I suggest you copy this now because we're going to work on this program and change it into a recursive function. So you can just go along with it at home. This is my checklist for converting an iterative function into a recursive function. Because it's a recursive function, the function has to call itself. So I write that in somewhere. I make sure that I'm passing the values that I needed using one or more parameters because that's the only way to pass the value along. I have to set a base case so that the iteration, sorry, the recursion will stop. And I have to check that I've included any other commands from my uh, original function. So I'm going to go through that checklist now. And by the time I've completed those four tasks, I will have a recursive function that works. So the first thing I've got to do, um, as I do these steps, until I've done all four of them, the function won't work properly. But as I go through this checklist, I will be gradually creating a working recursive function. OK, so, so step one, I have to make the function call itself. Remember, we usually call the function in the final line following the word return. So let's do that now. If, if you want to do it ahead of me, that would be great. I'll show you now. So that final line, the final line, we're calling the name of the function. We know the name of the function because it says it at the top, find largest. So I have changed the function so that it now calls itself. If I only did that in the exam, you'd probably get a mark for just doing that. Secondly, I need some kind of parameter because in, in my loop, the, the value of the largest number is just continually overwritten by the loop. But that doesn't happen in a recursive function. I have to pass that value along as a parameter. So let's do that. I've changed the function so that it uses a parameter. And when I call the function, I'm passing the same parameter along. We're well on our way now. Also notice that when I call the function, I'm going to have to call it with the parameter. And I'm starting with the value zero as my largest number. So I can cross that line out from inside my function. I'm not overwriting the largest value with zero each time. 
So I've made another change due to the passing of the parameter. I don't have to reset the largest value each time. And when I call the function for the first time, I call it with the value zero. Thirdly, I'm going to have to change the loop into a base case. The loop repeats while the number does not equal zero. The test that follows the word while is the test that continues the repetition. Remember that a base case stops the repetition. So we need to swap the test to its opposite. Instead of looping while the number is not zero, we stop when the number is zero. We've just reversed the logic. And remember that following the base case, we have the word return followed by a value, our final value, which is now what we return down the chain of functions to the main program. So our function's nearly ready now. There are some other commands inside the function and these were inside the loop, but now they just become ordinary commands inside the function. So I'm going to uh, remove the indentation. And I don't need to keep uh, have multiple lines telling the user to in input a number. Uh, it's OK if I just do it once with each recursion. So that's actually the finished function. And that's the final line that calls it in the main program. So my conversion checklist, I make sure that the function calls itself. I set the base case, which is the reverse of the while loop test. I use parameters to pass values along and I make sure that any other commands are included in the function. So here's a function, it doesn't do uh, anything very useful, but it uses a while loop. So can you convert that function so that instead of using a while loop, it uses recursion and returns the value A when it gets to the end of the recursion. Also write a line in the main pro program which calls the function and prints out the result. Okay, we'll do more about this in the next lesson where we'll convert recursion into iteration.